Welcome to this video in which we will examine a rigid body, in this case uh, consisting of a stoplight, and we will try to find the forces and couples at the point where this arm, which holds up the semaphore, that's a fancy name for the lights by the way, uh, so we're looking uh, for the uh, forces and couple at the point where uh, this arm is attached to the pole and then also where the pole is attached to the ground. So, um, obviously the first thing we want to do is uh, come up with a free body diagram. And uh, since we want to see the forces and the couple joining the arm to the pole, we're going to need to create a free body diagram of the arm alone. So let's do that here. We'll just take this guy and chop it right here. And um, when we do that, then we get this as our free body. Okay, so let's now apply the forces that we know are acting on this uh, body. We have the force going down that the semaphore applies. We have the weight of the arm itself, which also is going down. And then at this rigid joint, or sometimes this is called a fixed support, although in this case rigid joint seems a, a better option, we will have uh, both, well, we'll have a force in an unknown direction, which I'll represent by uh, X and Y components. And then, so we've got, uh, we'll call this F, A, X, and F, A, Y. And then we'll have a couple, which represents the uh, moment generated by the weights out here pulling down on, on this arm. So we'll have a couple, which I'll call C, A. Okay, so from the problem, we know that the magnitude of the forces are as follows. Um, the weight of the semaphore is 70 pounds. The weight of the arm is 150 pounds. Uh, we know distances, but we don't know the force in the x, uh, the, the x component or the y component of the force at A, nor do we know the couple at A. We need to find those out. So let's uh, use, uh, we're assuming that this whole structure is in static equilibrium, which means that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Well, in the x direction, I have F A, whoops, A X, and that's the only force I have in the x direction. That's equal to zero. So we've already got a value for this. F A X is going to be zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Well, in the y direction, I have F A Y minus 150 pounds, this is the weight of the arm, uh, minus 70 pounds. I apologize for putting these S's here. That's actually a bad habit. And this is equal to zero, which when we solve this, then uh, we've got minus 50 minus 70, which is minus 220. Move that to the opposite side, and we get F A Y is equal to 220 pounds. Okay, so the vertical force is basically uh, an upward force that uh, takes care of the weight of the arm and the weight of the semaphore. So the last thing we need to solve for is um, what the uh, couple a is CA, and we do this by noting that the sum of moments about A is equal to zero. Okay, well, one moment about A is this couple A. So we have that. 
Uh, another moment about A will be given by um, the 150 pounds times the moment arm of 6 feet. And uh, I've drawn this as negative because this is clockwise. And the convention we're using is that counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Minus 70 pounds times 10 feet. That's basically this guy out here. And this is equal to 0. We multiply this out, we get 900. Multiply this out, get 700. And from this, we find then that CA is equal to 1,600 foot-pounds. Okay, so when we build this joint, we will have to design it to withstand a minimum of 1,600 foot-pounds of uh, torque here. Okay, so that gives us um, the arm. Uh, the next thing to do then is to look at the pole. And again, uh, we've got a free body diagram of the pole. It looks like this. Uh, we know that, um, well, this here is point A. And we know at point A there will be um, a force and uh, with unknown direction and a couple. And we know that these will be in the opposite direction of the forces and couple that we had uh, at this joint uh, on the arm. So we'll draw this as F, A, Y, and I'll call this prime because it's essentially the opposite force than what we defined for the arm. This then becomes F A X prime. And the couple then is going to be in the opposite direction. We'll call this C A prime. Okay. And then at uh, the ground here, we also have a fixed support or a rigid joint. So we can define force components, F, B, Y, F, B, X, and a couple, which I'll call C sub B. Okay, so we actually know what F, A, Y, F, A, X, and C, A are because they're the same magnitude as the forces in couple that we determine from our arm. So let's write this down. We have F A Y prime was um, 200 and, oops, 220 pounds. F A X prime was 0. And C A prime, this is um, 1,600 foot-pounds. Okay, so now we can apply the balance of forces here. We have the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Well, in the x direction, we have minus F A X prime, because uh, we have this guy going to the left, plus F B X is equal to zero. Uh, this guy we know is zero, which means that F B X is equal to zero. Summation, oops, let's get a different color here. Uh, let's do this in light blue. Summation in the Y direction is equal to zero. We have uh, F a y prime, this is going down, so it's negative, plus f b y is equal to zero. f a y prime is 220 pounds. Oh, this tells me that I forgot something. Some of you are probably screaming, wait, wait, wait. 
you forgot the weight of your pole. So we have the weight of the pole going down here, and the weight of the pole was um, 400 pounds. Okay, I'm glad I corrected that. And I'm hoping you're glad I corrected that too. So let's see. We have to modify this. We have now the weight of the pole is minus 400 pounds, and this is equal to zero. Solving this for FBY, this tells us that FBY is 620 pounds. Okay, so basically the force down here at the base is um, uh, the weight, the, the vertical force is the weight of the pole, the arm, and the semaphore. And finally, um, we have the summation of moments is equal to zero. And uh, the only thing that can produce moments here, we have uh, CA prime. So we have minus CA, or let's see, no, um, yeah, minus CA prime, which is given by this. That's a couple, which acts as a moment. It's a rotational force. Uh, FAX could create a moment around B. I guess I should point out we're looking at B here. But it's zero, so it doesn't create a moment. And uh, the only thing left then is the couple at B. And this is equal to zero, which says then that the couple of B, or at B, is 16, 1,600 foot-pounds. So what this says is, at the bare minimum, I need to design my, uh, my base here so that it will withstand a couple of 1,600 foot-pounds. Um, I'm assuming I'd want to put a margin of error in there in case I've got high winds or uh, somebody smashing into the side of the, of the pole. Okay, there you have it. Um, that's an example of how to do uh, rigid joints, or sometimes we call them fixed supports. Uh, it also is an example of how to use two free body diagrams to get forces that are internal to the object of interest. In this case, we're looking for forces in the, in the couple at the joint between the arm and the pole. So, thanks for